What's happening guys? Keith here with your Impact Wrestling Homecoming review. So before I get into the review, I just want to thank everybody who's come out and supported the page. We are currently sitting at 499 subscribers. Once we hit that 500 mark, I'm going to be giving away this Sammy Callahan autographed picture. Um, this was a Pro Wrestling Crate exclusive, so hopefully we'll hit that 500 subscriber mark within the next couple of days. I plan on having a video up on Wednesday, so be sure to be on the lookout for that. So overall, I thought Homecoming was a good show. Uh, some questionable finishes, some things I didn't care for particularly, but we will get to that when I go through the full show review. Uh, my initial thoughts as soon as it came on to pay-per-view was uh, the place looked packed. I know Josh was on Twitter before the show went live, and we saw the line that was outside the building, and it looked like they had a good amount of people, but when we actually got into the arena, you could see how filled out it was. Um, this really brought back so many memories for me. I really liked the red ropes and the uh, yellow writing on the turnbuckle pads. It really felt like the uh, old-school TNA days back in the asylum. Um, like I said, this is where I started. I was bored with the current WWE product, so I tuned into NWA TNA. I'd go to my friend's house every Wednesday to watch the pay-per-views, and uh, it was really good to see them back here with a great crowd. They were hot throughout the night, and I really hope that continues into tonight's tapings. Um, we also did finally have the hard cam back on the ring, not looking directly at the entrance, looking into the crowd. Um, I think it was Vegas, New York and Canada, at least in the Rebel Complex, where we were focused on the stage. I like this view much better, but I guess maybe that was their only choice then. Um, but all right, so let's get into the show. Open the show with the Ultimate X match for the X Division Championship, the vacant, vacant title, uh, after Brian Cage cashed in option C. So we had Rich Swan versus Jay Chris versus Ethan Page versus Trey Miguel. Um, this was a really good opener. I, I enjoyed this match. It was great to see Ultimate X back. Um, crowd, again, is super hot for the opening contest. So this was the right way to open the show. Uh, just going to run down basically highlights from the matches. Uh, we saw Ethan Page hit a huge elbow drop from the cables onto Jake Chris. Then Jake hits an, a leg drop onto Ethan Page from the cables, which did not look like a fun landing. Uh, he was definitely selling it. Uh, we saw uh, Jay Chris hit a tombstone pile driver on the outside of the ring to Rich Swan. Uh, Page hits Jake with a spear as Jake was dangling from the cables. It seemed like we had a lot of spots between Jay Chris and Ethan Page. Um, the finish saw Trey hit a no hands Hurricane Rana on Rich Swan out of the corner. Rich Swan lands on his feet. He goes up to the other side of the ring, goes up the turnbuckles, grabs the cable, starts going across. At this point, Trey Miguel realizes what's going on. He goes up too, and Rich Swan grabs the championship, and he is the new X Division champion. I uh, can't really say I'm surprised about this outcome. Um, my predictions for the whole show, the I only got one wrong. Uh, they definitely went with the safe choice here. Uh, a little predictable, but, you know, that's that's okay. Like I said, it was really an enjoyable match. Great way to open the show. Um, apparently, as I was reading online, at one point, the title had fallen down. So we saw a snip of Ref Riley with the ladder in the ring. And I was like, what the hell's going on? But apparently, that was what was done. So they did a pretty good job hiding that. Um, but like I said, yeah, i not really surprised at Rich Swan getting the victory. Um Ethan Page had a fantastic showing. I mean, all four men really did a good job. There were a few spots where it seemed like it took a little while to get things set up, so that kind of takes a little bit out of it, but nothing too crazy. But like I said, Ethan Page really had a standout performance. Um, really expect some big things from him in 2019, uh, especially since back in the Mexico tapes when he came in as Matt Seidel's partner to face Willie Mack and Rich Swan at Bound for Glory. He apparently wasn't their first choice, but uh, happy with the outcome and a uh, good way to open the show. Next, we have Brian Cage being interviewed by McKenzie. He talks about how much he has sacrificed, and tonight Johnny won't be getting his friend Brian Cage in the ring. He will be getting the effing machine. Uh, then we had the women's tag match, Allie and Sue Young versus Jordan Grace and Kiera. Um, apparently, at this point, in, uh, I, one of my friends told me, actually it was Ro, he told me that uh, Impact was actually streaming this pay-per-view on their Twitch channel. 
Um, apparently, it, like, I did check and confirm it, but apparently it was taken down because people were complaining, which I completely understand. I mean, who would have paid? I, I paid $40 for the pay-per-view, but who in their right mind would have paid if they could have just watched it on Twitch? But I'm glad that was taken down. That would have uh, that would have definitely pissed me off. Um, but yeah, no, this was a, this was a good match. Uh, Ali and Young worked really well together. They isolated Kiera, uh, keeping, obviously, Jordan, the powerhouse, out of the ring. We saw a nice spot on the outside where Jordan had Sue Young in a stalling suplex position. Kiera came off the apron, knocking Sue down. Um, we saw a beautiful spot in the ring. Uh, Jordan showing her power. Hits a power slam and power bomb combination on Ali and Sue Young at the same time. Crowd absolutely went wild for this. Uh, Sue ends up hitting Jordan with the mist. Ali hits Kiera with a code breaker. Allie grabs that bloody glove from Sue Young, puts it in Kiera's mouth. Kiera passes out. Heels go over. At this point, undead bridesmaids come out, coffin in hand. Allie and Sue, uh, yeah, Allie and Sue go to put Kiera in the coffin. Coffin opens. Out pops Rosemary. Huge pop from the crowd. Um, she comes out, takes out the undead bridesmaids, takes out Su Young. Her and Allie kind of have a stare off. Allie kind of, you don't know what her decision's going to be, but she ends up leaving the ring. Uh, this was a good little match. I mean, the whole reason this match took place was because of the uh, return of Rosemary, which made perfect sense. You had to have her come back in a big way, and this was the perfect way to do it. But I'm really glad all four of these women were able to be showcased on the show. Uh, Kira really has come into her own. Jordan was able to show off her power. She's got a big fan base behind her. No reason she should have been left off the card. And Sue and Allie continue to do great character work. So I'm sure this will kick the whole Undead Realm storyline into next year. And I'm looking forward to it. Uh, up next, we had Moose versus Eddie Edwards. I was really looking forward to this match. They really did a hell of a job at final hour when they had their match. Um, Eddie attacks Moose from behind when Moose is making his entrance. Eddie goes for a suicide dive. Moose catches him, hits him with a nasty powerbomb on the apron, then sets him up for a second one. It, it just looked brutal. Eddie sold the hell out of it. Um, they fight into the crowd, up to the balcony. Eddie dives off the balcony onto Moose. Crowd goes crazy. Really good spot. Um, glad they used the, uh, audience, considering this was a Falls Count Anywhere match, really, like, old school. Um, Eddie goes into the ring post, he gets busted open. Callus's reaction was priceless here. It really looked like Eddie made contact with it, and I'm pretty sure he went down and bladed, but it, it was a good spot. Um, Moose is throwing chairs into the ring at this point. Eddie throws a chair as Moose was on the, the turnbuckle, hits him square in the head. Eddie goes up, hits a superplex on Moose onto the chairs. Um, earlier in the match, Moose had made a makeshift table outside the ring using the stairs and a guardrail. Well, Moose came running at Eddie. Eddie sends him over the top rope through the makeshift table. Great spot. Um, at this point, Moose gets back in the ring. Eddie pulls out Kenny. He starts beating the crap out of him with it. We see Alicia come out. We're thinking she's going to stop him. She ends up taking Kenny and cracking Moose over the head a couple times. Crowd goes crazy for this. Eddie cracks Moose one more time, hits him with a DDT, picks up the victory. This was a really good match. I really enjoyed it. Um, they did a good job, like I said, utilizing the arena. And the ending sequence was fantastic. We got them... You know, just a feel-good moment of Eddie Edwards and Alicia back together to end the match. So, interesting to see where they go from here. Uh, two top talent no longer will be feuding. I would assume this is the blow-off match, so I wonder what Eddie and Moose will be doing it up next. Uh, but we'll have to tune into Impact on Friday to find out. Uh, then we see Sam Callahan backstage. He says he's going to make an example out of Willie Mack. He should have just listened to Rich Swan. Uh, so, obviously, that match is next. Rich Swan. I'm oh, sorry, Rich Swan. Uh, Sammy Callahan versus Willie Mack. Dave Christ is at ringside. Willie goes on the offensive early. He takes out both men. Willie starts off hot, but then, obviously, he gets distracted by Dave. Sammy takes out Willie. Callahan controlled for a while. Um, Willie goes for a stunner. Ends up getting countered. Uh, Callahan hits a power bomb out of the corner and then a knee, which uh, Callis had to call it a V-trigger. Uh, for a near fall, 
Willie hits a stunner. Callahan gets his foot on the rope. Willie goes up top. I think the ref was distracted with Callahan at this point. Dave causes a distraction on Willie. Sammy hits a Death Valley driver at, off the top rope. Willie kicks out at one. Crowd goes crazy. We got a little bit back and forth, and then eventually Sammy puts Willie away with a pile driver. Uh, this was a fun, hard-hitting match. Uh, Willie really did a good job playing the babyface role. There were a few points where I honestly thought Willie was going to come away with the victory, but ultimately the right man went over. I mean, I'm glad they found a way to put Impact's uh, Wrestler of the Year in 2018 on the show. And uh, like I said, the right man went over. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw Callahan and Rich Swan have a feud up next. We obviously know there's history. Maybe we'll go a little deeper onto why they have, uh, haven't been fight facing off against each other. But uh, that should be interesting to see where they go from here. Uh, then we had McKenzie interviewing Eli Drake. Eli says this is where it all began for Abyss and where it's going to end for him. So up next, we have Eli Drake versus Abyss in the Monsters Ball match. Uh, this was pretty good for what it was. I think it went a little longer than it should have, but Eli Drake is an adapter. He did a good job in this match. Uh, Eli goes for a sunset flip at one point. Abyss has a staple gun in his hand, puts it right into Eli's chest. They fight into the crowd, get back into the ring. Eli has a bunch of garbage cans. He starts beating the crap out of Abyss. Eli goes to run at Abyss, and Abyss throws him over the top, hits an overhead belly-to-belly -belly suplex over the top ropes onto the outside where two tables were earlier set up. Eli goes crashing through the table. Abyss brings out the tacks. Abyss goes to chokeslam Eli on the tack. Eli is able to counter. Eli grabs a handful of tacks, throws it at Abyss. Abyss ducks, hits Ref Riley in the face. Abyss hits a black hole slam. Ref's out, so he's unable to make the call, the count. Uh, Abyss runs into the corner. Eli has a chair set up. Ref gets back. We get a near fall. Abyss gets Janice at this point. He goes to hit Eli. Eli counters. Eli has Janice, but he ends up getting choke slammed onto the tax. Eli's reaction at this point was priceless. He, uh, he sold the hell out of it. This brought a near fall. Eli eventually gets the tax in his hands, throws it in Abyss's face. He hits him with a chair. Eli grabs some zip ties. He goes to zip tie Abyss's hands. This does not work at all. It was it, the spot was unnecessary because Abyss was holding his hands up while Eli was doing it. Uh, like I said, just unnecessary. Eli starts beating him with a chair a bunch of times. Gets a near fall. Eli finally grabs the paddle, cracks it over Abyss's head, and he picks up the victory. So uh, it was fine for what it was. You know, Impact does a pretty good job with hardcore matches on pay per view. I always feel like Eli should be used better. He definitely should be in the main event scene. I mean, that's that's really my only gripe. Uh, we had a couple of good spots, though. Like I said, the tax and the table spot. But glad Eli got the win. As long as Eli builds momentum off this, I am completely fine with what happened. Uh, then we have an interview with Killer Cross. He says that no one will be talking about option C after tonight, but option X, option cross. John needs to do whatever it takes to win. And he, uh, he's definitely right about that one. Uh, then we had LAX versus the Lucha Brothers for the Tag Team Championship. It was an interesting way they lined up the card because uh, we had the X Division title match open the show. And then we had, what, four or five match? I think it was four matches of no titles and then three titles to end the show. Uh, I don't know if I would have went this way just because of how the last two matches ended, but... Um, LAX versus Lucha Brothers, this probably was match of the night. Um, it, the crowd was completely into it. Both teams just trading back and forth. Such a fast-paced, high-flying match. Uh, Phoenix hit an insane suicide dive in the beginning of the match where he hit Ortiz, and he was like halfway up the ramp when he hit him. Like I said, there was just so many good high-flying spots. We got this is awesome chance. The crowd was just completely into it. Both teams trading momentum, double team moves. Beautiful spot where Pentagon jumps off of Ortiz's back, hits Santana with like a jumping Canadian destroyer. Crowd goes crazy for that. Uh, Ortiz and Pentagon exchange chops, then Santana and Phoenix do. Everybody gets taken out. Everybody's on the ground. The crowd's going crazy. I think everybody was on their feet at this point. Uh, Lucha Brothers hit a spike package pile driver on Santana. Ortiz kind of breaks it up. It was slightly mistimed. Um, LAX hits a street sweeper on Pentagon. Phoenix is able to break that one up. 
Um, then we see LAX hit a handful of uh, double team moves on Phoenix as Pentagon was on the outside, um, and they pick up the victory here. Uh, the only thing that was a little sad was that you could clearly see Pentagon on the outside just kind of standing there as the match, the, the finish was happening, but I guess they just were going to sell it that he was completely gassed because, like I said, it was such a fast-paced um, back-and-forth match. Conan comes out. He says he was wrong, but what he wasn't wrong about was this was going to be a great match, and it indeed was. Like I said, fast-paced, high-flying, so hard to figure out who was going to come away with the victory. All four men put in a hell of an effort. Uh, like I said, a lot of us assumed that Conan was going to be the deciding factor in the outcome, but they didn't go with the predictable outcome here. So it's interesting to see where they go here. I mean, LAX has kind of done everything there is to do, um, so it'll be interesting to see where they go with them. Uh, as far as Phoenix and Pentagon, I hope the rumors of them leaving the company aren't true. I know there was talk about AEW throwing a whole bunch of money at them, but that was just from one source, and it really never seemed to gain traction. So, again, be interesting to see what they do with these te two teams post-homecoming. Uh, then we get Gail being interviewed by Mackenzie. She says that she's there to make sure the right woman walks out champion. That brings the knockouts title match. Tessa the champion defending against Taya. Uh, Taya starts off pretty hot. She did have a little bit of a botched head scissors there. Uh, Tessa moves action to the outside. Tessa hits a nice drop kick on Taya. She was propped up against the guardrail. Tessa's firmly in control. And then, like, it seems like they could have gone a different way with this match, but they... They did go how I expected them to go. We saw a little bit of interaction between Tessa and Gail, and it just kept building until the outcome, because uh, I think Tessa went to forearm Taya. Taya ducks. Tessa takes out Gail. Tessa hits the buzzsaw. She's got Taya pinned. Gail's nowhere to be found. She's down and out. At this point, Tessa goes to the outside, grabs the belt. She's going to use it on Taya. However, Gail gets back up. She sees this. They play tug of war with the belt. I think Gail grabbed the belt. It went flying, hits Taya. She goes down. So then Gail's forced to make the count, count the pin. However, Gail counts pretty slow. Uh, Taya kicks out. At this point, Tessa and Gail get into it again. Tessa pushes Gail twice. Gail pushes her back. At this point, Taya rolls up Tessa for a two count. And at the end, Tessa ends up attacking Gail. Gail hits the eat defeat. Taya hits the road to Valhalla for the win, so we have a new Knockouts champion. Not a huge surprise here. Again, this is kind of what I expected. A little bit of an overbooked match. I think their match at Bound for Glory was honestly better, but like I said, only because they decided to overbook it a little bit here. But I guess it's all right in the same sense because you kind of needed a screwy finish to take that title off of Tessa. Um, and you take the title off Tessa in this way. It really doesn't hurt her character. Now she can go on to feud with Gail if that's their plan, which it seems like it's going to be. And it doesn't involve the title. There would be no reason that a feud between those two should involve the title. So I'm fine in that aspect. It'll be interesting to see where they go with Taya and who her first challenger will be. Um, so up next, we have the main event. But before that happens, at this point, Josh announces that they will have Impact on Friday night stream simultaneously on Twitch. So, as it's airing on Pursuit, it'll be airing on Twitch. A great move by Impact. They said they listened to the fans. Um, and this was everybody's biggest criticism about the move, is that it's only available in, I think, 30 or 40 million households. I didn't get it. Most of the people I spoke with didn't get the channel. Um, so now their whole thing is pushing the Twitch subscribers, which is a smart move. Um, just so you guys do know, if you do have Amazon Prime, because I believe Amazon owns Twitch, um, you get one free subscription to Twitch with Amazon Prime, so you can just use that to subscribe to Impact's Twitch page. Uh, that's how I have it set up, and then you don't have to deal with commercials. So, like I said, it was interesting when I saw that uh, listed on Pursuit's website was 10 to 11.30 Impact, but now this makes more sense. Uh, so then Johnny is interviewed by McKenzie. He says tonight is about who has the biggest heart. And that brings us to the main event. Johnny Impact defending the Impact World Championship against Brian Cage. Uh, Cage comes out with some pretty cool entrance gear. The straps were a little uh, 
cheapish, but otherwise it was cool, something different. Uh, we had a feeling out process to start out the match, which we really haven't seen much physicality between the two men outside of what took place on this past week's episode of Impact. Uh, Cage was pretty much in control, uh, went on to the outside. Uh, Cage ends up, uh, or Johnny goes up top, flips onto Cage, hitting him in the face with a knee onto the outside. We had a very even match at this point. Both men go back and forth. Uh, Johnny sets up for Starship Pain. At this point, Cage grabs Johnny's foot. Cage hits an F5. Johnny kicks out at 2. Cage goes for Weapon X. Johnny counters it. Cage hits a discus forearm near fall. Uh, they go back and forth. Johnny gets the upper hand. Uh, he's able to hit Starship Pain. 2.9 count. Very, very close. Johnny hits a top row Spanish fly. At this point, Cage basically no-sells it. Getting up at 1. The crowd was really on Brian Cage's side tonight. Um, I, I read that some people that were in attendance said a lot of people were on Johnny's case, booing him. Um, Cage hits a couple of power bombs along with a buckle bomb. Impact kicks out at two. Cage hits Weapon X. We're thinking the vic it's over here. Johnny is able to get his foot on the rope. Cage gets knocked to the outside. He gets into it with the Survivor guys who are ringside. They try to jump the barricade. The ref gets occupied with them. Cage hits a drill claw in the ring on Johnny. Johnny's down and out. Easy three count. Ref's not in sight. He eventually gets back in. They get a two count. And Johnny Cage... Johnny Cage, yeah. Brian Cage goes to suplex Johnny into the ring. And Johnny kind of reverses it. Both men kind of fall into the ring. And Johnny rolls him up for a three count. The finish was just a mess. I mean, it seemed like it was going to be a tough spot to make work anyway. Uh, the interference by the Survivor guys was kind of unnecessary. Uh, I mean, my biggest gripe with the two title matches is, especially since they were back-to-back -back with screwy finishes and the baby faces both coming away with the victory, um, can't say I'm surprised that Johnny and Taya are both champions, the power couple, um, which were fine. I, I didn't have a problem with the two, the decisions made, but I probably would have went with different finishes. Uh, at this point, Taya comes out. The two celebrate in the ring. They go up to the stage and celebrate. Killer Cross comes out. He attacks Johnny along with Taya. He eventually power bombs Taya into a group of people in the crowd. Show ends with Killer Cross saying, Tick tock. Um, there was a moment in time where I was like, oh, crap, Ares is going to come back and attack Johnny, isn't he? But thankfully it was Cross. Uh, Cross definitely saved the end of the show, so kudos to him for that. I don't know if Impact called an audible just because of how perplexed the audience was with the finish of the match. Um, had they had him cause the finish, it would have made a little more sense because then they at least could have set up a triple threat match between Johnny, Cage, and Cross. But, uh, you know, he could have just had Cross end up laying out everybody holding the title above his head. Something like that. It's not like a title change happened where it did it bound for glory and everything was ruined because of it. But, uh, I mean, the possibility of a triple threat was still possible. But to be fair, Johnny did what he needed to do to retain the title, like Cross had said. Like I said, overall, I really enjoyed the show outside of the, the finishes from the last two matches. The Twitch announcement was a big deal, and I'm glad Impact listened to fans. I don't know if they got the buzz coming out of the pay-per-view that they would have liked. However, I don't think it's as important now with them being available on Twitch Friday night. Out, you know, If it was just available on Pursuit, then, then we would have been into interesting territory. But I'm exhausted. Hope you guys enjoyed my review. I will be back Saturday for sure with my review of the first episode on Pursuit. So thanks again, and until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye. Did you like that video? If so, click here to check out more great content. Thank you for supporting the Clock Cleaners Podcast.